they might have that knee issue, back is hurting, multiple places in their body is hurting, it's just like because they're just so tight. How do you actually start from there? They say that you can run 60 minutes and it's quite tough mentally <laughs> and quite boring in many ways. Or you can play paddle tennis and burn the same amount of calories and it's even more versatile and more. For example, my mother, she's in the best shape of her life. I was a second, she was like this way and I was like, wow, you, you have actually bicep muscle. But she just found something that combines. When you have a healthy, strong body, then just everything becomes easy and everything becomes enjoyable. And you're burning calories, you're building strength, you're developing coordination and you're not even training. One of the core values that I've always had was like keep in shape, stay in shape, just be prepared, you know, be physically strong so you're ready to take on whatever the world throws at you. Or maybe you're single and you want to go on a good date. You can invite mm. the girl or the man to whatever activity like. You will be like doing some activity with other people. So you will make friends and meet people like super easy. You can find any kind of physical activity that you like. It doesn't have to be a fight. Ah, oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. It's very hard to drive the car and, and also you have to, you know, like I was <laughs> sweating, my hands were tired, like everything was just tired after 30 minutes. Yeah, no wonder I, I stay fit in Dubai because I drive so aggressively with my Jeep. So. <laughs> There's something that I've noticed when people look at us and when they look at me and they're thinking like, why, why is this guy in, in the shape that he is? Like, and they see, of course, the videos in the internet, YouTube, social media and everything. And I think I've noticed actually that many people get this idea that, you know, it's, I, I just train all the time super hard. Like all we do is, just, you know, train hard every single session. And that is why actually we are in shape and it is true that that is one of the reasons that why we actually stay in shape but it's only you know one of those reasons and i'd like to bring you kind of the the other half of the equation actually what what really like even helps us maintaining this shape maintaining actually a really great shape and good shape because it is not only uh, about training hard and it's not also just because we are in the fitness industry like okay i'm a trainer so I need to stay in shape because because I'm a, I'm a coach. I actually even well before we ever like um, founded Vav Fitness, we were already in shape. We were already training many years ago before we ever stepped into the fitness industry. And uh, even in those times, I, I wasn't always necessarily doing as hard of a training that I'm doing now. And we managed to to stay in shape. And even with with you guys, I think or you, I think it was the same. Like we were all tr both training back in the days. Uh, before we really had this kind of fitness um, influencer lifestyle or anything, anything like that. Yeah, right. and before training was even like a integral part of my lifestyle, I was still like a physical human being. Mm. Because after military, I really became this like, uh, because before military, I was a very different person because I was just sitting in front of the computer. But after military, I became this physical person. I started to do like different physical things, activities and sp martial arts and sports and, and stuff like this. So fitness and this physical nature started to become part of my lifestyle at this time. Right, actually, that's also such a good point because I was thinking my background also, like I was, well, before you, I was, I think, you know, a physical being, like you said, that's a good term for it. You, you're like a physical human being because I think for some people, they, their body is like, it's, it's like, a, it doesn't exist almost. And that's how, how it often feels. But for me, like, even as a kid, you know, I was, I was enjoying the physical side of my body, which means that, for example, when I went to the summer cottage, I would set up these, these rings or hanging bars, and I would just do that for the, for the fun of it. Right. And if we talk about lifestyle back then, one of my favorite pastimes would hanging, was hanging out with my friend. And oftentimes the hanging out meant like literal hanging out. Like we went to the, the kids park, we had the pull up bars and some other, you know, what are these, uh, like a park equipment. And we would just train in those equipments. And it wasn't like, okay, let's go do a workout. We have sets, reps, something. No, it was none of like that. It was just like, let's go there. Let's have fun. Let's try our, uh, our strength. Let's, let's test our strength. So it was, in that sense, it was, uh, it was just like an integral part, something that you enjoyed to do, not like as a gym workout. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't like a sedentary human being at all, because I remember when I started studying in the university, I used to cycle with my bicycle mm -hmm. for six miles, like 10 kilometers in yeah. one direction every day. I would 
ride my bike to the university and then back. So yeah. it was like 20 kilometers, like over over 10 miles every day. I just cycled with my bicycle. Yeah, and, and so, the, yeah. I, I just must, must, must mention because Samuli had like a huge ties but like uh, during those times but uh, no one else like had during the the yeah, universe don't times. you don't maybe remember but your legs were like super thick i was like why is this guy like that? does he just do squatting all the time <laughs> okay. but i think it was mostly maybe because you did the cycling and even i did cycling but i didn't cycle 10 kilometers yeah you did like uh, half the yeah amount. yeah like half the amount and that was also a big yeah big it's thing. already a lot for most people it's like five kilometers like three miles in one direction yeah. two times per day it's already <laughs> very good activity and at the time I also started doing like martial arts, like we did capoeira and mm. some kick kickboxing and stuff like this. And also at this time, like calisthenics started to become like very big part of my life. So we went to the park to do pull-ups and I got the gymnastic rings. I did lots of training with those. Mm. So, and now fast for forward today, I'm like more active than ever before, or maybe I don't have, I, I'm not cycling every day anymore mm. because I have a car and it's not so easy <laughs> where I live right now. But, but I try to do so many different like physical activities as possible. And I find lots of like entertainment and joy in doing them as well. Yeah. I think that's a huge part that, that the joy thing line. Uh, and it's difficult to explain where did, where does it come from? But in a way I, I can't see like if there's any you know, creature or animal or human being out there that would not be happy of his, the, the strength and health of his own body. Like, I think that's a universal law that if you have a strong, healthy, capable body, you will enjoy life like more. That's, and that's you like, in, enjoy moving your body. Yeah, you enjoy if, moving. Yeah. If you are not healthy and if you are not strong, then you don't enjoy like doing anything with your body. Yeah, so actually, that's, it's that's, pain. That's, yeah, that's the problem because it's painful. So it's much easier to just browse like social media and play video games and watch movies and just lay on your sofa mm. or bed all day long. Yeah, because there is that sort of you need a bit of bit of that activation energy. Like if you're laying on the ground, you need more energy, of course, to get up. But then when it comes from from getting up to actually doing some physical activities, it can be less energy because you're already up. So it's about, again, I think, creating that sort of momentum. Of course, in the beginning, if you're making a huge lifestyle change, it's not going to be easy to to like create this more active lifestyle, but it does require like a little bit of that push in the in the beginning, for sure, like mental, mental, whatever strength, motivation, inspiration you can get. Yeah, when it uh, comes to body composition, I would say the training, like the actual training programs is the biggest factor, but it's also mm. the lifestyle is equally important as well because like we just do like lots of different activities like people don't even know like almost in every country we usually hike a mountain like we have <laughs> been hiking mountains in like croatia uh, armenia yeah, I mean, georgia yeah. tasmania yeah, yeah and finland also oh finland has very small mountains but they still, big rocks yeah big rocks but yeah but like that's one activity we really enjoy like hiking as you know mm. going to the mountains and exploring the nature and stuff like this and i also like traveling so every time i travel like to different countries like in europe or asia or like this i always walk everywhere like i don't like using taxis or this because they're usually not very good and they're not very re re reliable in many countries but i just like you know walking everywhere and seeing the city and really getting like a very good grasp of the city so i may walk like twenty thousand steps or thirty thousand steps yeah. per day when I'm on a like vacation, just you know, so, you know, seeing like different churches and different monuments and different historical sites, just you know, and yes, yeah, just enjoying the city in almost every country I go. So that's one activity. But there are like also the <laughs> other activities. Like nowadays, I try to swim quite often <laughs> and just explore that area. And and recently, I also tried the paddle tennis. It's like the new form of tennis, which is becoming very popular. Mm. And it's also like excellent training for your legs and core and coordination. <laughs> and not only that, I also tried just last week, one of my friends invited me to karting. You know, you drive the little cars on a mm. track and it's 
like people don't realize it's like super physically active <laughs> like uh, activity because it burns like more calories than running actually because it's very hard to drive the car and and also you have to you know yeah it's like <laughs> super, like i was sweating and my hands were tired like everything was so, so tired after 30 minutes yeah, no wonder I, I stay fit in Dubai because I drive so aggressively with my Jeep. So <laughs> no, it's just yeah. this joke. But but this is true. Like even we talk about this, like some uh, these formula drivers, you know, and even the what is this enduro drivers where they drive with the motorcycle. These guys are in, in, in insane, insane shape. So you wouldn't, you know, if you're doing like comp competing in any kind of thing, whether it's even something that is kind of light, like the what is, I forgot the name of this sport that was in Olympics where, where they just like, sliding something across the ice it doesn't look like training but you know if you're competing you're putting your energy to that and it requires a full alertness and focus in high speed it's gonna for surely burn burn a lot of calories but i think the main thing that i get from what you were saying is and what actually i think is is such a good thing is is that you were experimenting you were like open to just try different things right and i think that's how you find you find activities that you enjoy you enjoy probably all of those things but some other people you know maybe you don't like this maybe you don't like that but you're gonna find something that that you probably like because i see i, I feel like one of the big blocks that people have there are multiple actually blocks that people, people can have in just creating a more active lifestyle that really like engages their body but one big is that they don't have motivation they're like i don't want to do this i don't want to try and you need to try multiple things you will find something that you like it can be anything. It can be like you find a paddle and you're like, oh, wow, this is amazing. Maybe you find a group sport and you just notice that you are inspired by a, a community. For me, it's more like, you know, maybe solitary sports or like like one-on-one -on -one sports. So like martial arts, you're competing in, against uh, the other person. That is also something that motivates me and keeps gets me going there. But it can be, you know, like, for example, my mother she's in the best shape of her her life like i was a second she was like this way and i was like wow you, you have actually bicep muscle i was so like uh, very like amazed that my mother is in such shape and what she does nowadays and what she found is that she does this this cycling actually so bi bicycle and she makes like 20 kilometer long or even longer like trips with a bicycle and it's like really crazy because she wasn't doing this before but she just found something that combines nature and being outside and physical training and she combined those three together by doing these bike trips in finland and she can she's it's something that motivates her it's something that gets her going and i think that's so important that it can be you can find any kind of physical activity that you like it doesn't have to be a fight like ah oh, i need to do this i need to do that like you can find really real joy in some of these physical activities you know yeah i think they say that you can run 60 minutes and it's quite tough mentally <laughs> and it's quite ah. quite you know boring in many ways mm. or you can play battle tennis and burn the same amount of calories and it's even more versatile and more <laughs> like complex activity so yeah it's, and you are only having fun you are not even <laughs> like thinking about the exercise exactly so there's like a very big difference over there but the thing here is that when you when you have this very good physical foundation and very good like a uh, such you know base for for your body like your joints function normally you don't have pain anywhere you don't have any hip or knee problems and like this then you can just explore everything and just have fun like when you have a healthy strong body then just everything becomes easy and everything becomes enjoyable and you're burning calories you're building strength you're developing coordination and you're not even training so yeah that's uh, maybe the next thing is like okay well one big threshold for people is actually they, if they are in really bad shape okay they might have that knee issue their back is hurting like mo multiple places in their body is hurting it when they try to like lift their leg it's just like uh, like you're moving some tough iron because they're just so tight like how do you how do you actually start from there like you said okay you need to first get rid of these these issues that you have and for me i i, I like how could how can you not have motivation to get your body healthy if you're in this kind of shape actually that was one of the biggest motivations i ever had was these uh, pains that i actually caused into my body some tightness and and just nagging like back pain that i had this was a huge 
uh, like a like a motivation for me, huge in, inspiration because I knew that it would feel amazing to be without these problems. So that was actually a big thing that just the, I guess it's just because you have a, you have this what is this values? It's like a the, the, one of the core values that I've always had was like keep in shape, stay in shape, just be, be prepared, you know, be physically strong so you, you're ready to take on whatever the world throws at you. I think being in shape was just a huge, huge part of that. So that was like, if my body was not in shape, it was a big contrast between those two, my values and my body. So I needed to like kind of bring those those together. So get, making actually like get, getting, creating this active lifestyle is a lot about actually learning proper training where you actually learn to truly value your body in some ways yeah especially in the beginning if you are really out of touch then yeah you need to learn the body first <laughs> yeah there's because no. then it's oh, and of course you should also explore the different like activities like mm. you just can invite your friends and just say like let's try this thing let's go over there and do this thing maybe it's fun or maybe you are single and you want to go on a good date you can invite mm. the girl or the man to whatever activity like i've been playing paddle tennis with some people and like this so it's also very easy to just you know just invite somebody but if if you cannot find anyone then you can just <laughs> join the like different martial arts club mm -hmm. or different this dance clubs or something like this you will meet very easily people like especially martial arts and dance you will be like doing some activity with other people so you will make friends and meet people like super easy and then it's like i know everyone like people are living in different parts of the world and maybe it's harder to find like like-minded people like in some towns or cities or countries then there's also the online world like we also have the 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 Fafa fitness artists and athletes um. community for our programs as well and there are also people meet other like-minded individuals and then they even like arrange meetings in different cities and like this so so that's also one way and of course if you have like online community it's also like one way to stay active and stay present in this like physical lifestyle yeah i think community is a huge part it's it's like a it can help you keep accountable you get uh, you know, support from from people who might be having very very similar type of actually issues uh, as you are, and li like you mentioned, you know, going out with friends, you know, like y you think, okay, I go out with friends to have fun, so I go and do some drinking. Like that's you know, that's that's a habit. That's actually a lifestyle choice. And while you might enjoy as much and even much more if you went on maybe played some kind of ball game or like you said the paddle or tennis or whatever you can enjoy it so much instead of you know like yeah, you, you said like you go you might go for, to to a date and you go play paddle and it's the same way if you have your spouse your friend it doesn't matter like you can also suggest this kind of uh, what is this um uh, like just just do something physical together like go do some sports start a new hobby i think that's a huge part of it is that you have someone that is actually with you there that's actually that that makes it even oftentimes even more addictive because you have that other person you have that other person's energy and there's just this like an exchange and you get to play a game where there's maybe this like a friendly competition i think that's that's also really uh, addictive in in some ways yeah like you can play battle with your spouse or girlfriend mm. and you can also do like acro yoga together ah uh, yeah yeah or you can even <laughs> Like recently, me and Aero, we were having like this little small vacation here in Dubai, and we went to do like battling, or what is it called? You know that. Oh, uh, what is this? Ro you mean row? Rowing. Rowing. Oh, yeah, yeah. rowing. Like, and it was with the uh, what is the boat? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. This, this um, is the battle. Well, I don't know. Like, yeah, bad vocab vocabulary here. But I guess, I guess it's like a paddle boat or. A canoe, maybe a small canoe. Yeah, I don't a know. small canoe. But, uh, that's yeah. very fun as well and very good exercise for the whole body. It was, yeah. <laughs> and of course, you can even do training with other people as well. Like, mm. even if you do like workouts and stuff like this, you can go to the gym together, you can go to park together, you can train like this very easily. As mm. well. 
And like it doesn't like you can always come up with like some excuses and think, well, I don't have the time to do that. I, I don't, you know, have the equipment for this or that. But I think there's the one of the reasons that or things that helps me to also stay active and like very easily is that I, I find that there's endless amount of options with the training. And that's also because of the background that I, you know, I I did first learn to train my myself and I learned all these methodologies that even we share in all these programs because they are ultimately about you learning to utilize your body and this doesn't always necessarily require any kind of re external resistance you don't need to have weights you don't especially you don't need to have big weights you don't need to have a bench you don't need to have a squat rack or something like this way you can really train your body as it is without any kind of equipment that's you know that's that's a huge part and and just the the pure creativeness that comes out of all these options and understanding how your joints move, how your body moves, that is not something that's necessarily required for to stay active. But for in personally, for me, that is a big thing because I find that I can spend just five minutes or 10 minutes with my body, do some movement, and I can get some results with that. And so it doesn't actually, you don't need to spend 41 minutes, even 30 minutes, you know, usually most people have this time, but sometimes it's just about throughout the day doing this or that. Whenever you feel like, whenever you get like even the slightest feeling, like, oh, I want to move, you can move actually. You can actually do that. You don't have to think, oh, now I feel like moving. I feel like doing something, but I don't have that one hour window and I don't have equipment. Like that's not even needed to, to do like good training that would make, would have an impact. If you stay consistent, I would say. Yeah, I would say the one of the biggest ob obstacles for people is the ignorance. They, mm. Or I mean, like the lack of knowledge, actually. That's the biggest obstacle, because when you don't know what to do, then it's hard to do anything. Oh. But when you have all these tools and all these exercises and all these movements in your head and in your body, then you can just, just you know, when you are like bored or when you are at home, when you have some time, you can just practice like this. You don't even... Or maybe you have the online programs, yeah, you guys, like, just, you just, guys like just you know, check something and I try this. So mm. then it's very easy. But if you don't know what to do, of course, it's very hard to do anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And and for me, it was actually, well, okay, of course, now I've been doing it for, for a while. But considering my entire training journey, it took me quite a while to really understand the value in, in doing something uh, lighter, but doing it really consistently. Because sometimes... And in many cases, when it comes to the human body, intensity or, or consistency triumphs intensity in the sense that, you know, if you do like five really hard workouts and then you stop your training, firstly, you're, you won't get in shape. And if you do get in a little bit better shape after five workouts, you're not going to stay there if you just stop your training. So sometimes, you know, the, the mental a big part of mental toughness is not pushing in that one workout. The mental toughness is in the beginning to really have a very long-term consistent uh, approach into the training. Like I was talking about this in the, the, there was one of our previous podcasts where, you know, people don't even know this, how they develop this bad posture because for maybe a year or two year or a decade, they have been sitting in the computer in a bad posture and they just don't even know this, that they are actually actively conditioning and training their body to be in that sort of posture. But in the same way, you might do a little bit of movement every single day for your joints, like in our morning routine, you're just going through every single joint in your body with these more, let's say, light, fluid, flowing motions, every single body, or every single joint in your body, you go, go through like this way. And you don't feel necessarily, oh, my muscles are aching, my muscles are feeling this or that. But when you do that consistently, you are constantly lubricating your joints. You're constantly maintaining a good motion, good warmth, blood flow into your joints without like really thinking, oh, I'm doing a super hard, like a workout filled with exercises and such, because it's actually not needed. So you can do some some lighter intensity stuff, and especially for some people, this is important. Who like maybe dread like a really hard physical work, or they or they may get like this big shock. You know, there's some people who okay, I'm gonna start running now. So they they run like a like a 
they go for jog and they run way too much. They try to run way too hard in the beginning and they just like feel absolute crap. And some people can push through that. That's fine. You know, you can even do that. But for many, that might be a big shock where they're just like, ah, this is too hard. I'm going to give up. Same way I had in the beginning, very beginning, I was doing stretching and I was doing way too intense stretching. And I was like, this is just torture. Why would anyone do stretching? Now I've found, you know, or I later found an approach where when you're doing the stretching, I... All I feel almost when I do the stretching is pleasure because I know how to do it properly. I know how to apply it in a way that there's the, the correct amount of the intensity. And because it's less intense, it motivates me to keep going with this with this training. So understanding just this like a principle, it when you, you put a little bit less intensity, you don't try to do everything at once, you have it a shorter period of time, it's also very much easier to seamlessly integrate it into your lifestyle. This is like one big part. Aside from me doing this bigger workouts that I have or doing like my MMA practice and the sparring, which are really hard sessions, I have this kind of soft, low intensity, consistent approach that I may not feel in the moment super hard, but it actually has a huge impact over the long term of time. Yeah, how we do the stretching, especially now, it's it's super mm. relaxing and it's healing. It's actually mm. like very comfortable. It's like when you do it, it's just you just feel better. Yeah. But the many forms of stretching, it's very uncomfortable and it's usually and the thing about like being un- uncomfortable is that most things at first are very uncomfortable, especially when you're beginning, mm. and even. For us, we like recently we have started doing like the MMA more seriously with the Nordin Taleb, ex UFC fighter, and also more like serious sparring with some professional Muay Thai guys. Yeah, and it's like you cannot even explain. It's like super painful. Like the whole body <laughs> is wrecked for one week usually after the training sessions, and it's like lots of like for for us like when it comes to muscles, it's very not hard. But when it comes to like actual impact, like the ribs and the leg kick, leg kicks, and yeah. and also the cage when it rubs on your <laughs> like forehead and or back, skin or back. So it's like nose. lots of you know, very. It's very hard, at least now, because it's so mm. much pain and so much you know impact and so much like also getting used to like getting kicked. You get real damage in there. Yeah, yeah like real damage. Like real it's real like damage. real like. Those sports are like super tough. Like they are like full of pain, full of like <laughs> agony, and full of you know discomfort. But but I would say that it's mostly in the beginning. But even for us, it's getting easier and easier, and because the body gets used to the discomfort and the and your mind also gets more like uh, used to the pain and the uncomfortable situations mm. and also the pressure and everything. So. So, but yeah, but it's bad this year because this year we started to do it much more serious, seriously and harder as well with more like more professional level guys. So mm. it's like being also for us, even for us, it's been very difficult, but it's getting easier and easier every, every week. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what you just explained. That's where I think a lot of mental toughness come into play because it would have been really, really easy to be just like, oh, well, I, I, I'm not up for this stuff. It's just because it, the, the shock can be really big in the in the beginning, especially like because we just kind of threw ourselves to to spar with the professional Muay Thai fighters. Like we, we didn't really have <laughs> that much Muay Thai sparring background anyway. We just go there and, you know, st- start from this really high level. Like you get really beaten up, but it's not, it's actually, it's, it's not just mental toughness, but it's also... It's mental softness, actually, in, in the way that you're pliable to accept that you are weaker. Because a lot of the reasons, I think, also why people... It's not that they're not tough. It's just like they are too... Well, maybe it is tough, but you know, with semantics. But it's just kind of... They're very sensitive in even in their ego. Like, you know, if you're not good at something immediately, like, you know, then you feel like this, this bad. You feel bad about yourself or something like this, right? I think a big development, even with me personally, is that as a, when I was a kid or 
you know, a child, I was much more sensitive, like, oh, I, I'm not good at this. Oh, no, why, why should I try this? Because it has changed so much for us that we, we see the perspective. We see that if we put in the time, we know the process. Actually, that's what it is. Even in Skill Master, I talk about this process of learning, you know, new skills. There's this process and it me it, it is like an, if you follow the process, it will take you to whatever is this, this end here. So I trust the process that even if I have really difficult time here, I'm struggling, but I know that, okay, I'm taking the steps. It means that I'm going forward towards that, that goal. So I, I don't like lose my, my hope or get discouraged. And I don't have such a big ego that I think that I need to be, you know, the best immediately or something like this way. It's just, you go there, you, you take the punishment, but you also, like somebody said, it starts to use little by little, you start to know this, it starts to get easier and easier and better and better. And I think this is a universal process. It's not just martial arts and sparring. You can do, you can experience that in many kind of activities and sports actually. And even in life in general, whenever you're starting something new, it's just sometimes you learn to enjoy things, right? That are in the beginning might feel absolutely horrible and suffocating. And suddenly after a year or something, you're like, wow, this is very enjoyable. You know, it changes like that. Yeah, actually I, over 10 years ago, I learned, I read this book called The Art of Learning. And it was mm. written by this uh, chess grandmaster and phenomenon. Phenom, phenom. Phenomen. No, phenom. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was written by this chess grandmaster. Yeah. And he was also like this Tai Chi sticky hands champion. Oh. And nowadays he's like a very good BJJ guy actually. But he also wrote about this process of, you know, learning different things and how it, and the mastery and everything else. So it had like a big impact on my ideas as well. But of course we learned it by first and experience by just getting good at different things. Like, like in the beginning, I didn't know anything about like videography or photography mm. or even online marketing. Like I just learned everything by practice. So, and I sucked in the beginning and the same went, mm. went with training as well and martial arts and everything. So, so it's important to have this no excuses attitude and realize that like you don't need the ego at all. You just can try different things, get like, especially martial arts because martial arts destroy your ego or for some people, yeah, it, for some people it elevates the ego too much actually, <laughs> but it's because they don't have like the real sparring and the real martial arts experience. But if you do like the real training, you will get like so punched and kicked <laughs> and so strangled and wrestled and like you will get tossed around like you're like a baby in the beginning mm. but then you get better and better and better but it like really humiliates and destroys your ego and that's a that's actually a very good thing but but the another point here is that like you don't need need any excuses like you can try anything like you can get good at anything like you can just and all you have to do is just try like if you don't have the equipment then just use your body weight and if you have pain in your wrist then use the rest of your body like in many times in training or martial arts people have some little pain maybe in their like wrist or mm. neck and then they think like i cannot train today but when in reality you can still train like 90 percent of your body and that's also like one of the important principles of like athlete 20xx because you can actually pinpoint and laser focus on any area of the body. So even if one area is weak and in pain and needs to recover, then you can focus on everything else. So you don't have to be like, you don't like, there's really no excuses for anything. Like you can do un unless you are like really badly injured and you cannot get up from your bed then you can do almost anything. Yeah, for sure. You know, sometimes you need to rest a couple of days, but in most cases, I think for most people, there's, there's just, it's not, it's only excuses. It's really, it's literally, there's no real, like a uh, limiting reason. I mean, you see people, I just saw this video, video of guy who has a YouTube channel. He has no actually these hand parts and he's just like putting together guns and like shooting like a, like a real marksman. It's, it's like, you know, these kind of people just makes you think, you know, he would have all the excuses in the world, 
but he doesn't make them. He just like ma he just makes things happen and makes work makes things work with what he has. And it it's I mean the big part of this is you know we we're talking about just go try, do do just try this try that you know that's that's literally what it is. That's how you because I think that almost every people has this um, has this how do you, innate drive to try things. I think we have it. And I think most people would choose to rather be in shape than not be in shape, to be healthy than be not healthy. So it is there. Like, I don't need to put it in inside you. You already have inside this drive. It's just that it's been buried under so many layers of maybe conditioning, maybe education, maybe some kind of childhood traumas, maybe some, uh, you know, somebody bullied you, maybe your mother or father didn't like give you enough, I don't know, like uh, good good motivation or whatever. Mm -hmm. There can be so many reasons that are just piled up on top of that, that innate will that you have inside of you to be, to be something, you know, to be in shape. You know, and you and then you gathered a ton of these different habits. You know, you chose to then because you know you're up to no good. You choose to then eat rubbish food to feel good, or you choose to just play video games, or you choose to start just laying the bed and do whatever are these, you know, sequence of like just habits that then reinforce this idea of yourself that you are no longer this like a fit purple person or something like this. You know, I think it's it's really about recognizing these all these limiting factors that you have, and then finding that spark that is inside you because it is it is in there. It definitely is. And even if you're like listening to our podcast, I'm sure that you have some kind of like feeling of you know you have it there. Like you know that you should be living in a bit more active manner, maybe. So, like just really going after it now. Like like some even said, like you just need to start trying and maybe recognize these bad habits that you're doing, maybe you can remove them. Because when you start, it starts to then become this good cycle. You know, you can be, we, people sometimes say you have this vicious cycle, like if you don't train, you feel worse, you maybe eat worse, and then again, you feel bad about yourself, and then again, you don't train, and, and so it cycles. But if you try a little bit something, you enjoy it, you feel good about yourself, because you feel good about yourself, you start to make better choices in your even in, in your nutrition, it motivates you to try even more activities, and so on, the, the cycle just keeps going. So getting things into your lifestyle, there is the initial push that you must do you know like we talk about if you have pains and injuries there is that initial push there is that mental toughness that you need to put in there right but the the desire the passion should still still be there inside of you and once you get past that that little bit of a threshold in the beginning then it's not the eternal struggle you're not going to be going through like some it's always hard you're always suffering there is the process that you're going through that we explain even in the most difficult most the sport that has the most suffering you will get to a point where you start to enjoy it more and more and you don't have to do mma or martial arts you can do anything and it starts to become actually something that is just part of you it becomes something that's really nice something that you enjoy and you look forward to every single day like I, like I mentioned, it, there is not a being on this earth that would not enjoy the health and strength of its its body and its physique. And you're not different. I don't think anyone is different. It's it's a universal thing. You know, there may, might be some mental sickness that tells you otherwise. But yeah, the, that's how I see it. When you become <laughs> this physical being, it just has so many benefits. <laughs> like, And it becomes effortless. Like you don't even have to try to stay in shape. Yeah. Like if you just integrate like fitness and activities into your lifestyle, then you will be in great shape. You will burn body fat very easily and you will be just strong and healthy with like minimal effort. So, mm -hmm. and of course, if you want to push it to the higher level, then you have to push it hard and you <laughs> not every day, but a couple of times. Per week. Sure. And, and, that brings more benefits as well, but just alone, alone the, like we don't like even if we stop training all the hard training, we will still say, stay in good shape because our lifestyle is just healthy and active. So that's a very important aspect as well. Yeah, because I think if you just, uh, you know, the fact that what we teach in in our methods 
you know, the, it is really based on eventually knowing yourself better. And what it means that you know yourself better, it means that you also you recognize what your body is maybe asking, right? You you're able to sense very like small messages, like it's like your body is talking to you. And this is like even even with me as a trainer, this has been a constant development where I'm just more sensitive, and not more sensitive, but maybe more. I have a more accurate, like, like somehow ability to to sense what is going on in the body, right? And it's just something that keeps on growing when you're in this lifestyle, actually. But because of that, based on that, I'm much quicker. I react to, for example, some of these signals that come. So previously, I might have had some tightness somewhere. It just lingers, and I'm just like. I just for some reason I don't react to it. I'm like, ah, oh, I'll just do whatever some other. Now if I get this kind of feeling, I'm like, okay, I I know what to actually do about it. I know how to address it. I know what intensity to put on it. For example, if I do mobilizing training, mobility training, or if I do a stretching exercise. So it's based on having this really this good relationship with yourself. I think this is the, the key of it. You know, because you can put all these things on top of here, the workouts and routines and hobbies and everything. But what is really, I think, in the heart of it and the core of it is, for me, is just been developing a better, more realistic, healthier, more ego-free, and I don't know, I guess more honest relationship to my, to my own self and to my own body. Because it guides me a lot. And that is also... A process you know it doesn't come just like that but it, it's a huge part of having this active lifestyle is that i just yeah i just feel that's that's the way to to live with myself to live with my body <laughs> if you look at animals like they are, they are completely integrated into their bodies <laughs> yeah. like they are one being and they also mm. their lifestyle is super active so they just you know move <laughs> every day all the time so it's like and they are, yeah, well, they do. If they, they go to uh, eat, they walk there or hunt. Or. Yeah, yeah. They, like they're all the time in their bodies and all mm. the time also like enjoying the life and having fun. It's like imagine like a dog. It's just, you know, running with joy everywhere and just, you know, having fun and then going to sleep when it gets started and then it gets food. It's super excited. <laughs> it's just, you know, and that's what happens when you really integrate your body with your mind and you become mm. one like you are, and that's how it's supposed to be like you are not supposed to be this this creature whose like body is a mess and then mind is like separate entity because mm. it's supposed to be one there's no this there are no supposed to be any like a uh, separation between the two but what happens nowadays is that is that people are completely out of touch with their bodies and they use lots of like medication and lots of these numb, numbing uh, substances and foods that's really, you know, numb the body, like you don't even feel it. Yeah. And and then you just focus on these like video games and movies, which is like a fictional reality. Like you are not even r living in the reality anymore. Like you are like completely out of touch with reality. When Because when you're out of touch with your body, you're out of touch with your reality. And that's what happens. Mm. So... So, and for me, because when I was young, I was completely in this fictional virtual world because I was just playing video games and I was just inside my head because my body was a mess. But now in the last 10, over 10 years, it, it, it's been like a really exciting process to just move closer to closer to closer to nature and just like realize my own potential, realize my own self and just become more in tune with nature, more in tune with God, more in tune with reality itself. So that's like one of the, the best things about, about being like a physical being and just about life in general. Mm. Yeah. I just, I think it was very good. The example that you, you know, talk about these animals and because animals act on, you know, impulses. So they're everything that like you said, they're one. So anything that happens in the mind, it will be, uh, how do you say, I don't know, what's the word, like exported to the body? No, it will it will be manifested in the body immediately almost. 
And with many people, actually, we're not that much different. Like people, if I get embarrassed or some some get scared, you know, you get radiating or you start to, you yeah, start to shake. Actually, that's very interesting I, because when humans <laughs> act like animals, they destroy themselves completely. Ah, uh, you mean because they follow their in- impulses? Yeah, impulses. Like, because the <laughs> because nowadays the world has been built to like create the the <laughs> easiest impulse. Ah, yeah, 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 because, yeah, because it's because a trap. Have, it's, yeah, it's, it's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> so as as human beings, we have to be a, on a high level. So that's why humans have to have self discipline, self control, mm. and all these things. Because otherwise, the world will like manipulate your impulses like. Not like no one has ever done before. That's true. That uh, the the bigger point that I wanted to bring out here was that you know some of the, yeah if you follow these impulses that the world is giving because the world is kind of trying to exchange the 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 good impulse into the bad or or uh, let me explain it this way like okay an animal you know it it gets nervous or something and it starts to like even you know there's movement it it makes and it starts to walk or whatever it will bring out it its thing into the body right and if if i get like i feel maybe anxiety or something i will maybe like stretch out myself i will i will breathe i will do something you know you people see me like move my shoulder sometimes it's also a bit of a nervous reaction sometimes if i'm nervous i also it gets it gets worse it's just something that's been there for many years but like i i I physicalize things, right? I don't, because for other person, it might be you will go and, and take a drug for it. You feel anxiety, you feel something, you will go pick a drug, you will drink coffee, you will take some antidepressive, you will uh, you will do whatever, you know, but instead of face whatever is going on the body, because a lot of these issues of anxiety and even like just over energetic feeling, you can put them into you can guide them into or conduct them into your body. So training is a way to also discharge this kind of anxiety and, and over zealous energy or whatever. Like if you go do a real hard workout, like you are discharging a lot of stuff from yourself, even like, even like mentally. So I think it's just, it is partly about, about becoming more impulsive. A little bit more impulsive in the sense that you don't like but you listen to yourself yeah yeah but yeah but you listen to your higher higher self. yes yes but because in in a perfect environment your impulses and instincts are perfect yeah yeah, yeah. when you are exactly. like alone <laughs> in like a descent island then it's like perfect everything is perfect. you need like, to listen to the yeah, everything yeah. you, every time you listen to your body it's like almost perfect information but when you are like in a city life which is not good for the human being at all so it's artificial stimulus yeah for, artificial yeah. stimulus and artificial everything like the, everyone is trying to like drain your energy and drain your life force in many different ways like whether it's like sugar or drugs <laughs> or entertainment like this so you have in especially the more you are like in this like kind of toxic environments the more you have to be in control of your like uh, self mm-hmm yeah, I think, yeah, I think we're running out of time. But just as a maybe recap, what we've been talking about, really creating this this lifestyle. You know, it's it is the, the trying out, you know, many different things. I think getting rid of the excuses that you have and educating yourself, if you can, educate yourself on the body, on the physique, on the training. That's been a huge part for me as well, because the more I know about training, the more I know about my body, the more I have tools to take care of it, the more I see it as an important thing that I want, that important thing that I want to take care of. So having that as a, as a base and, you know, through all of our methods, it's been something that, that really has enforced these kind of values in me. So you become actually this person, you become one with your body eventually, in addition to just, you know, being open to to try all of these different physical activities. Yeah, I would say nowadays the information is the most important thing because without information, you don't even know what is good and bad. But when you get the information, when you get the knowledge, then you can make the right decision. Mm. You can make the right, de- like the, the best decision for you. But before you have the knowledge, before you have the information, you don't, you cannot even make the right decision. So that's why nowadays information and knowledge, it's the most important thing. True. Learn yourself. Yes.